So this episode is specifically for those of you that have been through some failures, some setbacks, some major financial reversals, you've been exposed financially, you're not happy where you are economically, this episode is specifically for you. I'm holding in my hand a 100 ounce bar of silver. And if you notice, it says 0 .9999. Let's take a look at a bar of gold. I'm holding in my hand a 10 ounce bar of gold. It also says 99.99 .99 pure gold. What do these two numbers mean? It means it's been through the fire. It means it's been refined. It means all the impurities after going through some major heat that have been pushed out of the gold or silver, whatever precious metal is put through the fire, guess what happens? Now this gold or silver or that particular precious metal is now considered pure and extremely valuable. You see, that is what God is doing in your life. So in this episode, I want to share with you three ways failure develops you to become a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. Starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like... What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And welcome to another episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series here on Sunday nights. And if you haven't noticed already, we are on a march to 150,000 subs. Our goal is to give $5,000 to a church, charity, or nonprofit, but we have to hit 150,000 subs. So could you please, have you done so already, help us reach that goal so we can cut this check. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, let's get into it. So how does God use failure, setbacks, financial reversals, exposing you financially and economically for his glory so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow faith based millionaire so i've understood this analogy for quite some time after been through a marriage and a divorce been through a single father situation before i got married to my now wife for the last uh, going on seven years i've been through some business setbacks i've gone in business with the wrong people chosen the wrong partners and my haste and ambition i've been through some financial reversals i've been through some setbacks I've been through it all. I've been through, sadly, deaths in the family. Been through deaths with friends and partners in business. I've been through it all. I can tell you it's never been easy. But all I can say is that failure is just a setup for recreation and revelation in your life. Let's discuss this. How does God use failure to set you up for greatness? Well, number one, he transforms you in failure. How? Oftentimes in positions of success or ambition or title or any venture that you're going into, God uses failure to humble you. He says to you, listen, my child, I'm in control. Earlier this week, we did a video about recognizing who really is in control. It was my frustration of getting car washes. The next thing you know, 30 minutes later, it's a storm that's happening after I just got done the car wash, after the weather prediction said it was nice and sunny that afternoon. It's my funny way of God reminding me and humbling me that he ultimately is in control. The second part is in our ambition, in our college degree, or in our aspirations to become an entrepreneur, we start our own corporation, we start our own independent practice. We go about doing our business and their success, right? You got success, you get recognized, you're on stage, people are celebrating you, people are writing you up in the newspaper, people are writing you up on blogs, people are profiling you in radio and TV, people are hosting you on their podcast, interviewing on their podcast, and you think you're awesome. And after a while you say, man, I'm independent. Well, God reminds you through failure to transform you back again that, hey, you understand that you need to be dependent on him. You might be independent in your action, but ultimately you are dependent upon God because he is giving you those opportunity. And failure also gives you an opportunity to restore yourself, have the right building blocks, faith-based building blocks to make sure that when you build your success, when you climb your financial success ladder, that you've got to remember that you've got to put God in the middle of everything that you are doing. So before I go on to point number two, if you're firm with me that number one, transformation is happening in your life, put in the comment section below this affirmation. I'm humbled, dependent on God, and restored. I'm humbled, dependent on God, and restored. Put it in the comment section below if you agree. The second way that God will use failure to refine you and define you is that through that failure, same time God opens doors. 
Listen, I never thought in a million years that through marriage and divorce, being in the family court to get custody of my children, going through some serious emotional setbacks and just, just emotional crud going through family court, I never thought in a million years I'd leave the Marine Corps. I never think that in a million years that, hey, God is opening a new door in front of me so therefore I can be part of an industry that was most likely to make me a millionaire, which is the financial services industry. I never thought in a million years I'd get out the Marine Corps and say, hey, I'm gonna be a life insurance agent, which is what I became. And I went from a practitioner to building a business in the life insurance industry. I thought I was gonna be a cop, a firefighter. I thought I was gonna be a postal worker because I had the Armed Forces Expeditionary Award that gave us points and credits towards advancement as a government service employee. I thought I was gonna be serving my community to protect and serve as a cop. I remember being offered a job with local law enforcement coming out of the military and I was wondering how, why they were paying me so much money as a rookie cop. Come to find out I was supposed to be a cop in South Central LA. <laughs> I wonder if they paid me so much money. I asked them one question. I said, how often do you have to withdraw your weapon to protect your life every day as a beat cop? They said, well, about three, four, five times a day. That's it? <laughs> three, four, five times a day. I might as well stay in the military. What I'm saying is that God will use failure, setbacks, things that don't go your way. You may be angry. You may wrestle with God. Like, God, why is this happening to me? Why are these bills coming my way? Why are people quitting on me? Why, why is my product, my service not being... Uh, uh, bought or sought out after, after all the time, energy, and effort I put into it. Why is that happening? Well, God is humbling you and saying, hey, I'm opening new doors for you. That may not be the door I want you to walk through. Here's another door. Now, here's a challenge. When God is opening doors, listen. Are you listening to what's going on? Are you seeking information? I say, okay, Lord, is this the door you want me to go through? And Bible, don't expect a burning bush or the voice of God to boom down from the heavens to say, go through this open door. There's so many times that God speaks to you in small, quiet voices, so many different opportunities for you to say, hey, this is the door I would love for you to walk through. And you never thought you walked through that door, but guess what? My child, he says, follow this door. And uh, some of the craziest things happen. By the way, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 to summarize what scripture says about failure and setbacks. And it reads like this. And the God of all grace, who called you to the eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will him restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. You see, God wants to use you, and you think that, my gosh, my life is ending. My life as I see it is over. No, God is using that moment to transform you and changing you and changing your direction, so therefore you can go through a new door. When you're going through this new door, Say, I'm curious. I, let me find out questions to this new door. Be curious. Have the natural curiosity that gave God in your spirit to start asking a lot of questions and find out what God, in your prayer time, say, God, what do you want me to see as I get through this door? What do you want me to notice? What do you want me to take advantage of when I come through this door? So before I go on to point number three, if you agree that God is opening new doors for you, put it in the comment section below. I am listening and seeking and curious to God. I'm listening and I'm seeking and curious to God. The third thing, God uses failure to expose you to your flaws. Whoa, now that's something a lot of people don't want to hear, especially those of you who are entrepreneurs, you're ambitious people. You've taken your own money, you flipped it and made millions off it. Or for some of you looking to climb and make and earn your first Cash flow millions. God is going to use failure to expose you to your flaws. Maybe there's certain things that you need to pay attention in your skill set. Maybe there's certain things that you need to pay attention in your finances. Okay? Maybe there's certain things that you need to hire certain people in that scenario because you wonder to yourself, listen, I'm making all this money. Where is it all going? See, God is using a financial situation for you. Hey, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? No, I'm not seeing it. Let me put the situation in front of you again. Are you seeing it? No, I'm not seeing it. Let me put the situation in front of you again. Why aren't I getting anyway? Because... God is saying, you're not paying attention to this area of your finances, this area of your relationships. You know, um, my wife exposed to me that I had a certain pattern of behavior before I started, obviously, my relationship with her. That I date a certain type of woman and she has a certain name for me. I will leave this off this video. But babe, why are you in this pattern? Matter of fact, another pastor told me the same thing. Matthew, why do you date this type of person? There's a pattern. I didn't want to listen to it. I didn't want to listen to it. Because that's the person I wanted to date. That's the person I want to be around. This person I wanted to, to, to continue to follow up on. 
But then there was a pattern. I resisted it for a second. And uh, make a long story short, uh, at this time, I'm sharing with you my all authenticity. I was dating this person, and uh, she already had two different kids from two different men. And I already had my three kids. And I already know how the toughness of a blended family already is. And I was thinking about continuing to date this person, and I had all these signs, had all these signs. No, 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 good person, but not the right situation for you. I pulled away from that relationship. I said, you know what? It's not gonna work, time out. Uh, let's go our separate ways. And uh, in less than a year later, she had another kid with another guy. And I could have found myself in a hole further and further and further down, away, away, more and more away from what God really called me to do in my entire life. And I can't tell you what this person is doing right now. I haven't followed up and I'm not connected on social media. I couldn't tell you. But all I can say is if I stayed in a relationship, I most likely would be more miserable. I'd be more, most likely be more unhappy because I realized that God had a different plan for me than this situation. Now that I'm married to my now wife, thank God that situation came across my way because I'm married to her. We have a beautiful family. We have a blended family of now five. We have a two, uh, two and a half years old right now that we, we enjoy. We our children that are, are grown, our 11 year old son, we're enjoying all of his activities. Thank goodness I made that decision to allow God to expose me. And while I was engaging my curiosity of why certain doors were opening and certain doors are closing, God exposed to me a relationship that he wanted to honor and bless me with. The other part of being exposed, it also exposes you to improve your mental and emotional health. Oftentimes there are certain things that you and I don't need to be taken on. And through failure and setbacks, you learn to say no. As much as there's freedom in the word yes, there's also much freedom in the word no. And when you realize what those non-negotiables are in your life, the certain values and principles that you will stand for that are non-negotiable in your life, which is you have to establish, take some time to figure out what those are. I am a non-negotiable in this category. I'm a non-negotiable in this category. This is a red flag. I need to stand by those things because that will help improve and increase your mental and emotional health. Here is what scripture has to say about that. Let's read that in Psalms uh, chapter 34, verse 18. It reads like this. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. All right, so how do you deal with it? Well, my wife is sharing with me a devotional she was uh, reading and uh, inspired this thought process here. Shake it off. God says shake it off. Failure, setbacks, financial reversals, shake it off. And uh, uh, you have to understand that people and circumstances will constantly come at you. People and circumstances will constantly come at you. And by the way, when you go through failure, setback, financial reversals, anticipate this is not the last time this is going to happen. You have to anticipate that another level of financial reversal, another level of financial setbacks, another level of people and circumstances coming your way to cause you to turn your head and say, what? It's constantly going to come your way. Let's read what scripture has to say about this in Acts 28 verses 1 through 6. It reads like this. Once safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The bystanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer for he escaped from the sea. Justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered with no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead, but after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. <laughs> now, listen, I'm not sure if, sure if you want to be recognized as a god, but here's the most important thing about that. Things will latch on to you. People set a circumstance. People come your way, backstabbers, naysayers, doubters, haters, trolls. All of them will come at you. And people will say, ah, hey, he's this person. He's this person. This person about to fail. This person, that. We're going to label you, put all sorts of things. They'll put some reaction videos towards your way. they put some uh, negative posts about you until you what? Boom. Shake it off. Boom. Shake it off. And throw that diaper and throw that snake into the fire and let God deal with that viper. Let God deal with that circumstance. All you got to do then is shake it up. It didn't say to retaliate. It didn't say to take a whole day to find a way to respond to that viper. It didn't say take a whole week to say, let me go through this financial circumstance. It said, shake it off and throw it in the fire and let God deal with that circumstance. So you just got to understand these situations come your way, shake it up because people, circumstances, vipers, naysayers, doubters, haters, et cetera, et cetera, will constantly keep coming at you. And by the way, the more you grow and progress, the more you grow to make 10,000 a year, 50,000 years as an entrepreneur, 100,000 a year, 250, 500,000, a million. Listen, 
the intensity continues to increase. And through this process, as God continues to refine you, guess what happens? You become strengthened and tempered to take it all. Number two, keep going and keep improving and keep serving. Let's read what scripture has to say about this. Matthew 10, verse 14, it reads like this. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. Doesn't say stop calling people, didn't stop following up on people, didn't stop saying, let me continue networking, and continue to build my brand. Didn't say stop doing shows, didn't say stop taking gigs. It says shake it off and keep going. If people don't receive you, knock yourself out, all good. I'm not taking it personally. This is part of the journey. This is how God is using failure to develop me to become a talented, highly compensated uh, entrepreneur. Whatever the case may be, faith-based cash flow millionaire, whatever the case may be, God is using me in this very moment. All you gotta do is keep going, keep improving, and keep serving and trust that God is gonna use you in a mighty and very powerful way. Number three, keep the pressure. Keep the pressure on. You should anticipate the pressure. You should want the pressure. Matter of fact, tonight I, was, uh, I have a conversation with my mentor. He's keeping the pressure on me because he knows I can hack it, I can take it. Understand this, pressure makes diamonds. As I shared earlier in this episode, Fire refines gold. You don't believe me? Let's take a look at what scripture has to say about that. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. It reads like this. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. They have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proven genuine. It may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. See, God is refining you to be a mighty warrior, to be a precious metal in his eyes to magnify and make God's name known. That's why fire refines gold. And as I wrap up this point here, one of my favorite scriptures about you going through trials in tribulations, getting struck down and getting back up, getting knocked down and getting back up. One of my favorite scriptures here is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10, and it reads like this. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. See, that's you, followers and subscribers of the Seven Figure Squad community. That's your friends that's watching this as you shared it with them. Again, you might be pressed and pushed from all sides, financial reversal, business reversal, setback, pandemic, lockdowns, restrictions, all these different things. And guess what? God wants to show you a different way. God wants to reveal you a different direction. God wants to open a new door for you. You might have to close one door, open another one. It doesn't say get lack of focus and go in multiple different directions. It says get closer and closer to God. Maybe this is a moment for you to say, Lord, what do you want me to do through this failure and setback? What message do you want me to see? What industry do you want me to get involved in? What investments do I need to make with finances? What type of tithings and gifts do I need to have with the last dollars that I have so therefore it can come back to me a hundredfold because your word says to test me in the tithe, to test me in all these things. That's between you and God. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a YouTube channel here to help usher this conversation, keep this conversation going so you were reminded how awesome it is to go through failure. That means that God and even the enemy is paying attention to you and the God and the enemy say, listen, how does my son or daughter last through this? Check it and God say, hey, check him out, check him out, check this out. He's gonna praise me, he's gonna worship me, he's gonna give me glory, watch this. And the devil says, nah, I'm gonna make sure he stays confused, he stays angry, he stays in a pit away from you. God says, no, 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 I've given so much to my son, my child, my daughter, I've given them so much. By the way, this is the conversation I see in the spiritual realm. I don't know, this is just what I'm seeing through my head. Maybe some of you guys may see that too as well. But these are the things necessary to make you, you, a greater you. These are the things necessary. Failure is part of the process. Failure is just being turned into and out. And what do you call that? That's called success. Failure is nothing but success turned inside out. For every nine failures, that 10th one, boom, it's a success. And it happens that you forget all the other nine failures before and because that's how great victory and success tastes when it's done the right way. So with that being said, guys, I literally thought your comments, your feedback, you agree with me, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below. And before I let you go, a couple of videos I want you to check out. This is the life of a faith-based millionaire in 60 seconds. Please check out this video and check out this video here, an interview I did with Anthony Trucks, 
who was destined for greatness in the NFL and one injury set him back and how God is using him now is amazing. You guys got to check it out. My interview with Anthony Trucks. That being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, if you're following us on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.